um that's about it <laughs> thanks for watching all my ramblings and this is uh, um yeah <laughs>to me is about a good seven inches I've got like a seven inch ball down here on the bottom so now as I lift it up and I'm not sure if that was so this the spread on this that on the table oh yeah it is showing up there what I should do as I pull it up we can kind of see it's more intense just right here the closer I pull it up now you could argue that these lenses if you look at this you could argue that these lenses are spreading the light out here which it is it is kind of spreading the light out here but the intense part of the light is just right there in the middle and that's what I find if you take um, if you take the app, right, you can me you can measure the ooh, you can measure the lumens and you can measure the par. Excuse me, you can measure the par, and as you come away from that center, the par is less, and it intensifies as you get right into that little light there in the center. And so you can see here the two dots that happen, and those two dots kind of stay it's difficult to see I'm pretty sure the camera's not picking that up but the two dots grow and by the time you get down here we're at seven inches which is why they say with the Vipar spectrums you want to take them two feet off the tank in order to get the spread but that's a lot of BS too um, depending on how big your tank is if you have a nano tank you better you better pick that Vipar spectra you know two feet off <laughs> 12 inches minimum away from the tank but if you've got a 30 inch 29 inch deep tank like I do where the first corals are only at 16 inches you can rest those lights right on the um, right on the, the top right on the lid so anyway this is what I'm um, this is the spread on this these Cobb LEDs however these guys the spread is amazing like I noticed right off the bat I swapped out these blues here with um, with one one of these Cobb LED blues, and it just it filled the tank. I mean, you can see the white in here. There's not a spot on there anywhere inside the tank. There's not a little highlight dot anywhere. It's just lighting up the entire tank, which I love about these. And and I bet these are what you find in some of your higher end tanks. But this. This is two bucks, two dollars and fifty cents for buying one. If you buy more than just one, then the price comes down. Um, but anyway, I've got um, enough of these that I'm probably going to pop them on either this heat sink or another heat sink and put it in the, the main display tank because I just love the spread on these and I'm, I'm curious how it's going to work in the big tank. But for this little guy, I'm pretty, pretty sure that I'm going to go with the one LED that has all six colors in it. So <laughs> that was kind of a lot to say. I'm left in the dark now. <laughs> Let's see what kind of scheme of LEDs I'm going to end up with over here. Um, wish me luck. If you've got, if you've already done this, um, and you've decided to go with the cobs or you've got a small little tank like this I'm curious if anybody has used that one LED that has six LEDs inside of it um, I that's the next experiment I need to do is get that wired up um, I'm gonna put it on top of here and in the morning I'm going to um, turn that one on and see if it brings everything to life if it doesn't bring everything to life I mean I already measured it with with the par meter on my phone and it looks 
good, but I'm not sure. Those LEDs were not made for a reef tank, or maybe they are. Maybe that's what some of those um, $65 LED, nano LEDs are using. That's what I'm thinking they're using, and that thing was only three bucks so on eBay. So $65 versus three bucks. <laughs> oh, um, I was going to show you the app that I'm using and the way I'm getting these lights to be controlled individually. So you see there, the app that I'm using is called ooh, cancel boom. It's called Magic Home. The app is Magic Home and you can get these little controllers. Here's one. You can get these little controllers this one you can supply 5 to 24 volts and you can control three different um, three different things so like if you wanted to put um, white and red on one of them then you could put green on a separate one and blue on another or blue and UV on one then you could put red on its own and you can put green and white on its own or, or maybe red and green on one of them. So anyway, basically you can only control three things with this. They make, so if I wanted to control more than three, then I'd have to get two of these and connect it to each, each color individually and then run it in the app separately as a separate unit, which you could do. Um, but I don't like that. You can also get, and these are Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi, right? So that's why I'm able to use it on the app. This is $6. You can get them as little as um, $4 if you buy a handful of them and it's free shipping, Amazon. Um, they do make um, these Wi-Fi controllers that will control up to six, up to six different things individually, but they're like 35 bucks. Um, so I'm like five dollars or six dollars, thirty-five dollars. I think I'd rather just go with a couple of six-dollar ones, or like what I was saying, maybe I'll put red and green on one of the channels, and then put white on its own channel, and then put UV and blue on their own channel. I kind of like UV and blue at the similar intensity, so that's why I'm kind of thinking we'll stick with UV and blue being on the same channel. But um. Yeah, and these things, they're so tiny. Look at that. You can probably mount it straight up there or you can have the wires come down, wrap them, and then come down individually to this and you can locate this down by the power source. You can do whatever you want. It's a DIY, right? You do whatever you want. So that's how I'm controlling it. Magic Home app. And I'm just using these little individual LED controllers. Oh, so I also have this set up so that it comes on gradually in the morning. It takes an hour, so I have it coming on, I think at, from 11, it starts to turn on, and then it finally um, reaches full intensity at 12. So I have it going, stepping up a, an entire hour. And then in the evening I have it um, doing the same thing. I can't remember what the times are that I have it coming on and off, but I have it, I have it um, powering down over the course of an hour and it just lowers the intensity. It's kind of cool, and I don't, I really don't think corals care about that, but um, because on the Vipar Spectra, I haven't had that, and I've had it for a year, and my coral's growing, and that kind of thing. Maybe it'll grow much better if I don't shock it in the morning. <laughs> I know when I first got that, um, the, um, the tang, the uh, sailfin tang, that big giant sailfin tang, and I put him in the tank, and the first morning when the lights came on, boom, you know, the Vipar Spectra just because I have three of them and they don't come on simultaneously. They come on individually. They go psh, psh, psh. and and the sailfin just freaked out. He was like, boom, boom, what's going on? What's going on? That was the blues. And then the whites came on this, an hour later <laughs> and I watched him and um, and I watched him for a whole week and I really wish I would have um, filmed it. But by the end of the week, He's used to it. He could care less if the lights are on or not. <laughs> but I thought that was interesting because it was a bit of a shock and I was thinking, oh no, am I going to have to start figuring out a way to put an apex controller on there to control the Vipars? Because you can do that. 
but I didn't. And I'm still not a believer that that's necessary. But the reason that I did it here is because of this controller and the Magic Home app. Now, some controllers, it depends on the controller. These controllers, the Magic Home app does not give you the option to have a, a ramp up or a ramp down. But the way I'm doing it is I'm using Alexa. So you can use Alexa or you can use Google, the Google Home thing. Um, and within Alexa, Alexa will control this because you can you know, give the voice command to Alexa and say, Alexa, power up my nano tank or whatever. Um, and it will also control, Alexa has a built-in ramp up feature and ramp down, like a sunrise sunset feature that's built into it that can control each one of these individually, which is pretty cool. And so that's how I'm using Alexa to control this. <laughs> um, I thought that was pretty neat, so I just did it. And uh, when I when I get this cob fixture going, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put on a ramp up, ramp down. As long as I don't have to pay 600 bucks to do that, why not? It's free. I do want to talk a little bit more about my setup here on this heat sink. So now you see, not only do I have a heat sink, now that particular heat sink is made for one individual cob light. So you can turn that, that cob light LED on um, full heat full full brightness and that one heat sink will take care of it without a fan um, but I took one of these tiny little fans um, I can pick it up but these guys start to get hot right away anyway let me just flip it up real quick you can see this little fan that I have on here this little fan I got also from the computer, from a bunch of old computers. I save a bunch of old junk off of my computers. I save the fans and I save the heat sinks. And then I take most of the other stuff um, to be recycled. But I like hanging on to that stuff because they're just kind of fun to play with. And so I have a few, bun a few of those little fans and they're quiet. They're absolutely quiet. Right now I have it on full speed at um, 13 volts. So it, it's making a little bit of noise. I can't hear it from here. I'm, I'm standing right behind the camera and I cannot hear the fan. I can hear the bubbler. I bet if I turn that, the bubbles off, I could probably hear the fan from here. But I don't even have to run it at 12 volts. I can run that at 6 volts and it keeps those LEDs cool if I don't have them on full brightness. So I have two of those cob LEDs attached to that single heat sink and it does need a fan, but I only need to run it at 6 volts, which is super, super quiet. I can't hear if I stick my ear right next to it. I cannot hear it. I hear the wind blowing, but I don't hear the fan at all. And so those little fans, you can get them. I got, um, I got another one for a different project I'll show you. It's one of the uh, more expensive tiny fans you can buy. I think I spent $10 for it because I was trying to get a really super quiet one. Let's see, here it is. It's, um, it makes this one Noctua. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll give you a close up. I can't remember the name of the company that makes these, but it's a cute little fan and it's super, super quiet. Here, I'll zoom in on that so you can see the name. There we go. So if you want to look that up, you can look that up. This little fan will fit right on top of there. And it's got little holes there. You can you just take a drill because this is aluminum. You can just take almost any drill bit and just drill your holes in there. And then I would for a big fan like for a big heat sink like this, I think I want a bigger fan, right? One of those CPU fans. Um, this will be interesting how I build this. And I'm not sure that this is really going to need much of a fan on there. But those cobs, they do get a little hot. They do get a little hot. So I'm not gonna lie when I put that on the big display I'm pretty sure when I put that on the big display with all these low cobble LEDs I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be demanding close to 80% um, intensity 
and that heat sink is probably going to get pretty 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 hot so i'll put a fan on it just to be safe but then of course i'm going to turn that fan down and i'm going to be taking the temperature with my trusty little um thermometer spicy reef here signing off I got it. How do you know if it's up or down? I was wondering why that ball kept getting bigger. And then it hit me. Yeah. <laughs>